Well, welcome everyone. Thank you again for your patience. And uh, as Rob said, I'm Bill McCann with Dancing Dots. Today we're going to focus on our solution for people with low vision. It's called Limelighter. Um, in a future webinar, we want to talk more about solutions for reading and writing music for people like me who use Braille and speech primarily. You're going to hear Jaws talking at parts uh, during my part of the presentation. Um, that's because I need Jaws, but most of our um, most of our users for this product don't use speech. Some do, but most don't. Um, anyway, let's see. Um, I'm going to rely on my colleagues there from Aroga to uh, guide me because this is new technology to me. Um, and despite our best preparations, we still had a few snags, as you can see. But um, once we get it going, I really like this because you'll be able to see me, you'll be able to see my screen, and you'll be able to hear the audio coming from my computer. Well, before I try to share my screen then, um, I'm going to show you a couple things. Um, first of all, let's see. Uh, here is um, a pedal board. We use this pedal board so that the person reading the score can press one of these pedals to scroll the music. Can you see it now? Okay. Um, and as you can see, if you can see it, um, each one has a different color sticker on it to help make it more visible when it goes down onto the floor. Um, I won't be using the pedals because we've configured the software so that the arrow keys can do what the pedals do. I just find that easier for demonstration purposes. I'll also be using this musical keyboard and I can use that to write music and I want to give you a little taste of how that's possible as well. Um, Again, this will be for a future webinar as far as emphasis, but I do have a Braille display here, and it does have the Braille music that is equivalent to the print music you're going to see. Um, when you get Limelighter, uh, you can get the software and run it on any, any Windows computer you'd like, but I'm going to show you one that we ship with the model we call Legero. This is an all-in-one touchscreen computer, and uh, it can sit right up on your piano, or it has a little support on the back that you can fold out and rest it on your desktop or tabletop, etc. It only weighs seven pounds. It'll run on battery for a few hours, and many of our end users really like it because they take it right onto stage. They can put it on their music stand or on top of a keyboard music rack and they can read their music nice and big. Okay, I think that's all the show and tell portion of the program as far as um, hardware that you can you can see. Now I'm going to try to share no. ZP Toolbar Parent WND. Does that look good, Mary Pat? Can you see my alt tab? Post attendee dash zoom dash alt tab line. Okay. Here Six I dot rail. Line allowed scripts bird in line. And I'm going to set the zoom level now. Edit menu. Because we're 245.25 percent unavailable. Oh, let's see. Frame width checked. 240. Save zoom layout. Resizable, tiny, small, norm, big two, huge three, zoom four, zoom five, five. I'm going to set the zoom level to zoom six, six. six. Enter six dot braille, Yankee Doodle Limb. Did that get bigger for you? Okay. Um, so the idea here is to get uh, your music into this program called Lime. Lime is a, sort of a Microsoft word for music, you might say. It's a way to get music documents. Uh, displayed. You can read the music or you can write it. Uh, we're focusing on reading the music. Most of the people we um, 
served with this product want to read their music more than write it, but some more advanced students and professionals, of course, need to write music. So I'll give you a, an example of that later. But right now, we have a simple piece on the screen, and you make sure I'm configured. Yeah, it should be. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go into what's called the uh, Automatic line music scroll. line liner initiating automatic scrolling at R1. Press pedal to start. Okay. Again, I'm not using the pedals, I'm using the arrow keys. And everything is working as it should. You see the music scrolling across. And if you see that you pretty much look in the same place. The music's tracking you. you don't have to track across and you can find this Let's start it again here. Line, Yankee Doodle Limb, page one of one. Bar 16, beat one. Let me go back to the beginning here. Lime alert. Go to bar, or bar one, beat one, treble. Yeah, so I'll do that again, and I'll... Lime music, stay, lime lighter, initiating automatic down, scroll. Speed it up. And then use a, use a pedal to do Line, bar 12, beat one, when and dash, beat three. When we first developed this software a few years ago, people uh, looked at the first version and they liked some things, but they said, can't you add it so it just, um, add a feature so it scrolls automatically? And we said, well, we think we can, uh, and now we have. But what we find is that it's uh, it's useful to some people, but some people find Lime alert. when go to bar in a group, bar one that, one, um, you know you're following a conductor. If if the conductor starts pushing the tempo a little too fast, and you you have to try to catch up, or vice versa, if he's slower than uh, the music scrolling, even though we have a pedal to slow it down or speed it up, you may not be able to get back in sync. So some people when they're playing in a group, prefer this next method, which is um, manual scrolling. Lime music stand. Lime lighter initiating manual scrolling at R1. And I'll show you now again. I'm pressing an arrow key, but it could be a pedal. So I, the pedals are great because if I have my flute in my hand, I don't have to reach over and touch anything. So I'm just going to press that, and you can see that. We scroll to the next measure and to the next measure. So you have complete control on when you want to move to the next measure. And by the way, um, I don't know if you can see it, but one of my hands is on my Braille display. And as I'm scrolling, I'm seeing the Braille music as well. So now I'm on that measure. Okay, so. So that's nice. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of other nice features. Uh, I think you may have already noticed when I press Control G. Lime alert. Lime. Go to bar or page dialog. Edit nine. Go to bar or page, and I can type in any bar number or page number, and immediately go to it. This is handy during a rehearsal where the conductor may say, "Let's let's start again at measure seven. Uh, so I'll just type seven, seven, and hit enter. Enter bar seven beat one. And there I am at bar seven immediately. Um, this machine I'm running it on is a laptop. It does not have a touch screen, but the touch screen uh, feature um, allows me to touch the screen with two fingers and a big um, go to. Well, the same thing you're seeing comes up. This nice light alert. Go to bar. Or big numpad comes up. I can't see it, but uh, as I understand, they're very big numbers in a configuration like a standard numpad. So you would just, if, if the conductor said, let's start at bar 17, you would touch one, you would touch seven, you would touch go to, and you're right there at bar 17. Uh, again, I'm using the keyboard with speech, and I just type in 17. Bar 16, beat one, on dash. All right. It went to 16 because it's telling me, hey, by the way, there are only 16 bars in this piece. 
So, um, okay. Uh, the other feature is something that, uh, well, when Mary Pat takes over her portion of the presentation, um, she can show you uh, using a mouse. But again, if you have a touch screen, you can, um, you can literally draw on the screen with your finger. Um, we, we did have some technical difficulties getting our limelighter demo unit on so we could do some of that. Um, but it's, it's a very handy feature when you have a touch screen. The touch screen is handy, it's nice, but it is not, uh, it's not mandatory. Okay, let's open another piece of music that you might be familiar with. Open Light and Peace Dialog. PC card Pockle Bells Canon excerpt for violin limb. Six dot braille, call in new Pockle Bells Canon excerpt for violin limb, violin, bar one beat one, treble clap. Okay, so here's a piece we actually did for someone. Uh, we prepared this for them. And we'll talk about how you prepare the music later on in the presentation. But um, I'm just going to do the automatic scrolling here. Live music stand. Live lighter. It's kind of this tempo for Papa Bells. Okay. And, uh, I should mention that this playback feature is very handy for practice sessions. Obviously, when you get onto the stage and you have your violin, uh, you don't want um, your computer playing along. So you can mute that, though. You go into um, Lime's Here dialog. Lime alert. Here dialog. Percent of. You click on select none, or I press alt n. Alt n. And I believe if I press alt. Alt M. Metronome while playing. Yeah. Check box. Not checked. To check press space bar. Check the thing that says metronome while playing. Enter. Pockle Bells Cannon. So now, you see that scrolling, Mary Pat? Are we scrolling the music? Okay. So. Pockle Bells Cannon. Anyway, so there you are. Uh, there's no playback, there's no metronome. But that's very handy for, for um, practice sessions because um, low vision people tend to do what I do a lot, which I, which I have to do is I study the Braille music score and I memorize the music. And um, depending on your low vision condition, that may be uh, the way you're used to working. Um, however, we do have some customers who take their limelighter onto the stage in performance and read the music, literally read it as they play, and even have been able to develop uh, the skill of sight reading the music, which is wonderful. That was one of my, my dreams that um, people would be able to do that when, uh, when we got this product going. Um, Okay, so let's see. I wanted to show you a much more complicated piece of music, and then I'm going to ask Mary Pat Ruther of Dancing Dots to take over. Um, let's see if I can... Open line piece dialog. Open line piece dialog. File name. Explorer pane. Pocket Bells Canon X. Zoom up to a, a level of 10x, which is very large. Um, if you need more than 10x, there are little tricks to make it stretch a bit more, but uh, if it's still not big enough, it may not be the right product for you. But um, anyway, let's see. Where am I going here? Oh, Sonata Pathetique. Oh, there it is. Six dot braille. Call in new piece. Here's that base. Sonata Pathetique. Op 13 limb. PNRH-1. Sonata Pathetique. Op 13 limb. Page one of three. And we did a certain amount of preparation for this one, uh, but let's see. Edit menu, under control, 300.03% unavailable. Is that? Save zoom layout, three Z. What if four. I make it four? Six dot rail, Sonata path the T, top 13 limb. Um, okay, so let's just play this one back. Scroll it. Off. Lime music stand. Lime lighter initiating automatic scrolling at R1. Press pedal to start. Um, 
because I heard something. Anyway, the point is there, you can see that um, this is much more complex music um, and it's, it's possible to, to show uh, on your line ladder. Um, actually, before I go to Mary Pat's portion, I'm just going to quickly file menu, new. make a new file. Line alert, can, new piece dialog, number of measures, edit, 60, write some, type and text, alt plus M. Say I want 32 bars. Tab. And um, beats per measure. And it keep everything else pretty much. Alt P. Name for first part in piece. And type in text. PM, Alt. And I'll C say L A clarinet. T. Enter. Colon new piece. Clarinet. R1 beat one. I key signature dialog. Key, key for clarinet. Key number of sharps or flats. And it zero. Type in tab. And we're gonna make the sharps. Uh, radio button. One flat. Flats. Radio button. Checked. Two of two. Tab. F major. Radio button. Checked. To change the F major. Enter. Colon new piece. Page one of two. Um, we can Alta, even annotation menu. X. General MIDI equals. Make it. Lime alert. General MIDI assistant dialog. Text. Pro R. Reads. Tab. Je C. Clarinet. Enter. Six dot braille. Colon new piece. Page one of two. C. Okay. And my keyboard is not working because this is a webinar. Um, so I will just type some notes in from the PC keyboard, but this nice musical keyboard is also something we can use here menu no input n oxygen 25 checked o it says it's checked no input n oxygen enter six dot braille colon new piece page one of two doesn't want to work okay so i can type in notes from the pc keyboard as well so well, let's do that note entry mode hold on eighth um so we'll start out with some nice eighth notes um Note entry mode 8th dot beat 1.5. Beat 3. 16th. Some nice 16th notes. Uh, R2 beat 1. Quarter. Nice quarter note. Note entry mode quarter dot beat 2. Beat 3. 8th. Shift octave up to five, middle C1. Must be a node entry or duration edit mode to use this. Oh, it was. Node entry mode eighth dot. Bar three B 2.5. B3. <laughs> okay, that was a bit high. That's it. Lime lighter initiating manual scrolling at bar three. Um, oh, I forgot to do something, of course. Lime alert, lime dialogue, switching off lime letter arrow key mode, continue, button, space, colon, new keys, black bar 2B, 4 point, black bar 3, B, black, black, black bar, bar 3B, 3, B, 2.5, C, 6. A little high, I'm going to change that note. Not in node, ent node entry mode, 8th dot, B, 3, B, 3.5, B, 4, B, 4.5, bar 4, B, 1. Note entry mode half dot B3. Okay. And node entry. So. B1. First uh, node. Before I started writing, I should have. Edit menu. Under control. 245.25% on available. I can go. Six, six, zoom six it dot up. Braille, colon, new so if I am a low vision musician, I'm looking at nice big notes. Um, and we can have Lime play it back for us. Uh, using the. Um, oh, but I have to switch on the. Key. Lime alert. Lime dial space. Colon new piece. Pay. There we go. Lime music, lime lighter initiating automatic scrolling at bar. Escape. There is. Bar four. Um, and of course we can, we can go back. Alta, and annotation X, title, like lime alert, the dynamics assistant dynamic dialogue, M, MP, M, MF, enter, colon new piece, page one of two, six dot braille, blank, lime music stand, lime lighter in it. Lime alert, if lime dialog, either. switching off space, colon new piece, page one of two, like move through beat three, half rest, one note at a time. First note, and beat one, beat two, beat 2.5, C5, beat three, D5, we can, accent. We can put an accent on the note. 
B3.25, C5, B3.5, B Nassler. There are all kinds of things. So it's, it's a uh, completely accessible system for reading and writing music as well. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mary Pat. And I think what I have to do is stop sharing my computer. So bear with me for a second. Alt tab. Post okay. intent. I'm going to mute my sound so we don't feedback. And I'll come over to her desk and continue describing what we're doing. Okay. Let's see. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, is are you using Mary Pat's microphone? Is that muted? Yes. Okay, so we can hear Mary Pat okay. Okay, now you can talk. <laughs> okay, is the volume okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay, great. Stay. Okay, let's um, open up Sharp Eye and scan some music. The first step to getting your music into the limelighter would be to, well, one of the first steps or one of the options would be to scan a piece of sheet music. So I have a piece of sheet music on my scanner right now. And I'm going to scan it and bring it into Sharp Eye. This piece is a clarinet piece called Mega Force. So the first step we're here is we're acquiring the image using a flatbed scanner. Um, you can also convert PDF documents to TIFF images as well and into the TIFF image without this scanning step. But we're acquiring an image now. It should be grayscale and it should be 300 dots per inch. Yes, so the image is in the lower part of the screen. This is your image window. And it scanned the entire sheet. And now I'm going to bring it into the upper window, which is your music window, by just going to read, read. So now Starfy is analyzing that image and trying to reconstitute the score. Until then, it's just an image. It could be a picture of your house or your dog, but it happens to be a picture of a page of staff notation. And Sharp Eye is analyzing it and saying, okay, there are groups of five horizontal lines, and some of them have these little ovals on them, and it's kind of rebuilding the school. I don't know if you can see my mouse. I'm circling uh, the status bar, and it says that there are six rhythm warnings, which means Sharp Eye has detected that there are six errors in the music. There are two ways to find those errors. You can click on the slide bar and just move it across. And when you see a blue triangle, that would indicate that there is something wrong with that measure. And just by left clicking in that measure, it brings up a small red cross arrow down in the image window and this measure should it should be a three measure rest. So I will insert three measures of rest in here, put in some bar lines, grab the whole rest, and put them in. And now we're down to five rhythm warnings. And if I click on this button right here, it says go to next rhythm warning. If I click on that, that will take me to the next measure where there's an error. And I will left click in there. And again, this is another three 
measure rest. So I will turn this into three measures of rest. And over here, we've got another four measure rest that needs to be entered. Another measure. So the the second and third note in this measure should actually be eighth notes and not quarter notes. So I will left click on one of them, control click on the next one, and I can turn them into quarter notes, and that remove the error. We're down to two. Uh, the next measure, this first note should. It's hard to see, but there's a little dot. So it should be a dotted half note. Uh, now we're down to one error. And this measure, the half note, it should just be a half note. Just remove the dot. And we are down to zero rhythm warnings. So then the next step would be to bring the music into Lime. So I'm going to save it in a music XML format. I will go into Lime and I will import. Sorry, I'll go into Lime and import the music XML file that I just saved. Here is our music. Um, from here, you can add the title, and uh, if you want to put rehearsal markers in, or if there are any dynamics or tempo markings that need to be added, you can do it then. Then you can alt click to select items and move them so that they are in a. a uh, spot that's easy to to see them so i'm just all clicking and dragging i can add the title by going into annotation uh, text assistant title make a force and bring that down some so we can see it From here, we can zoom and change the zoom level. So I set it at five. We also have a markup mode. I'm using my mouse right now to, to turn the uh, to turn it on. I'll change the color. I'm actually using my finger. I have a touch screen. Uh, you can draw on your music um, to highlight notes or um, it's very handy if the conductor says, you know, circle that note or cross that out in a rehearsal, you can quickly do that. And the next time you open the piece. Your markups will be saved. If tomorrow you need to go to a higher zoom level or a lower zoom level, your markup will scale uh, in proportion to that change in zoom level. Um, I know we're running short on time, so I want to do one more thing and then open it up for any questions. Um, you saw that we had saved that scanned piece as music XML. I want, I'm giving her a thumb drive right now, <coughs> which has a music XML score that I downloaded from the internet. Actually, at this one, we, we downloaded the PDF and we used a, a third party program called PDF2 Music to create a music XML file. Um, and I just want to show how when in line, well, let's back up and review. We need to get the music into line somehow. And you saw two out of the three main ways we do it. 
first you saw me enter notes directly, either from the PC keyboard or the musical keyboard. Um, you saw Mary Pat scan something and then convert it to XML and import it that way. And this third way is just to find the music XML file <coughs> online, or maybe you have a friend who made it for you. Music XML can be exported very easily from virtually every program now. It's, a, it's become the de facto standard for interchanging score data. The most popular programs probably in the world, commercial music editors, Finale and Sibelius, can both export scores in music XML format, and we can import them as you see. So um, can, you, can you find that? There's a folder on that uh, thumb drive called Webinar. And there should be a file called uh, freescores.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to import this one um, piece called Panis Angelicus by Cesar Franck that I found online. We found the PDF and we converted it. Um, you can also you can use uh, your favorite search engine and type in, you know, for example, uh, Bach Minuet in G Music XML, and sometimes you'll find it. You can just download it all ready to go. But this one we had to do some uh, some processing. Um, PDF2 Music is a, is a really great program. When it works, it doesn't always work very well. But when it works, as it did in this case, it's, it's really very handy. Uh, okay, did you import it? Yes. Okay, so let's play back a little bit. Basically, um, I actually ran it through our good field translator for real music, and I saw, I don't know if you can see it, but the only problem I found was some of the lyrics must have used a funny font or certain accents for the Latin text, and so I had to clean up some of the uh, lyrics. But other than that, it came through ready to go. So, Mary Pat, did I forget anything before we turn it over to Q&A? Um, if you just, if you have a touch screen, you can just touch your screen with two fingers and maneuver it through. Like I can move to bar eight and go to bar eight. Um, you can go to page two if there was a, a page two. And you can go back to the beginning um, by going to, to bar number zero. Right, that's, that's a very handy feature. Also, um, you can, if your piece has a section that's repeated, you can use Lime Lighter uh, to press, I think there are two pedals you press when you come to the end. Say you come to the first ending and you want to move back. Uh, we used to have it as one pedal, but we found that sometimes people accidentally press the pedal and that was disastrous. So when you press a series of two pedals and it brings you back up either to the beginning of the piece or to the um, beginning of that repeated section. So it's not just scrolling images. Uh, Lime is a music notation editor that understands the, the uh, structure of the music, and um, that's one example of that. So I think that's all we have, and if we want to turn it over, maybe our moderators can help us Take questions. I'm not sure how that works. Great. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Uh, yeah. So if anybody has any questions at all, uh, there is, and I see, I see, I think someone has one already. Um, there is a there is a Q and A uh, button on the bottom of their Zoom screen. Um, so I will just uh, start firing questions over to Bill. Um, the first question from Sean is, is Lime Letter supported on Mac? 
No, it is not. It is not yet supported on Mac. There is a version of Lime that will run on Mac, but it doesn't have the Lime Lighter features yet. It's something that we want to do on the Mac desktop. Um, it's not to be confused with Mac iOS uh, that runs on devices like the iPad and the iPhone and so forth. Okay, and can you email files when they're complete? Oh, yes, you can email files anywhere in the world. Um, and you can, um, I should say, you saw me writing music. We have customers um, who use LimeWriter or use the related uh, Lime Allowed scripts that I was using with JAWS. And they do their music theory homework or their own composition compositions or arrangements, and there's a, there are a lot of free utilities. One's called Qt PDF, C-U-T-E PDF. You can install, and then basically you click um, print or control P, and if you print to the Qt PDF or other programs, it, it automatically creates a PDF of your music. So you can send it to your teacher or your friends, and they don't have to have Lime to be able to read your score. Okay, great. Uh, anybody else have any questions at all? To just feel free to type it into the, the Q&A. Um, For people who, um, like me, who may be using JAWS or another screen reader, is, is there a trick to being able to do that that Brian might share? I've never used this platform before, but sometimes you may have a keystroke. Yeah, if you can't see the Q&A window, I think the easiest way is there should be a chat window or a chat button you can go into, and you can send a question that way. I'm actually going in there right now, and we can see if there's anything in there. Okay. And in the meantime, we've got another question. Uh, Stella's asking, is this readily available in the UK, and can you use keystrokes instead of a mouse? Uh, you can obtain it in the UK. Um, uh, I think, well, you can obtain it anywhere by downloading it. And I and, and uh, thank you for that question because it's important to mention that we do have a free evaluation version. You can try for 15 days, and we can extend that if you run out of time. And, uh, you need a little more time, but you can try it, and we'll actually make a date with you. Um, get online like we're doing now, share screens, talk together, give you a, a quick orientation. You can try it. So it is a private link, though, because we want people to download it. We know, I mean, we know it works, but we don't want people to just download it and try it. We want you to let us know you're doing it so we can help you through it because it's, uh, it might be, well, it's, it's not the most simple setup, I'd say. So we want to help you install it, make sure it's configured properly, and give you your best shot at uh, evaluating it for your needs. So the best thing to do is email info at dancingdots.com, I-N-F-O at dancingdots.com. Let us know you're interested in the evaluation version of Line Lighter. Your second question, um, yes, Keystrokes are quite possible. In fact, I was using them uh, because I'm a JAWS user myself. Um, most of my part of the presentation, I was using, well, all of it, I was using uh, keystrokes to to uh, operate the software. Mary Pat is 2020, and she was using a mouse, and but also using keystrokes when, when necessary. So um, what we tried to do, especially with those touch gestures, is during a rehearsal to limit and try to ultimately eliminate having to grab the, the mouse or the keyboard but just use touch gestures to um, move around in the score so that your hands again can stay on your instrument and not not be using your hands to type or click Rob, there's a message in the chat room to Bill. Can you read that out? Uh, the one from Jenny. Uh, it's thanking Bill. He's a music teacher from 
Uh, I think New York Institute. No, I don't see it. Yeah, it says, uh, it says, my name is Mr. Nam. I'd like to say thank you so much from all my heart to all of you for a fun presentation. I'm a music teacher uh, at NY. Uh, ISE, the New York Institute for Special Education, and he says, huge thanks to Bill. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Bill. Okay, so we've got another question now uh, from Jenny, um, which is, what was your development process in creating the Limelighter? Uh, we had a strong framework to build on because we had just a little history. We started putting lime back in the mid-90s. Uh, when we were building our good feel for our music translation software, I had to decide to want to also try to build our own music notation program at the same time, and I decided no, because it seemed to take years before you could do that to make something that does what mine does, which is um, basically show staff notation and allow you to uh, get your music onto the printed page. So we teamed up with a brilliant guy at the University of Illinois. His name is Leopold Hawken. And Dr. Hawken published his file from After Lime. So we built a rail software on top of that. And then a few years ago when we decided, let's see if we can also help people who have low vision. The uh, obvious choice was to build that around Lime. And we worked with Dr. Hawken, who helped us develop the Zoom features and some of the other things that you see. And uh, uh, he, he's now actually um, moved on to some other work. We have a brilliant programmer uh, named James from the UK who does some great work. It's built on what Liverpool started. And um, so it was definitely a big team effort and uh, kind of a convergence of a lot of different uh, technologies and uh, talents over the years. Okay, great. And we're just we'll just give it a few more minutes. Wait for see if anybody else has any questions, and uh, then we'll maybe start thinking about wrapping it up. Um, do you have any idea, Rob, how many different uh, people from different countries were on this webinar at the moment? I don't. I don't have any way to track that, unfortunately. Oh, that's okay. I, I was just curious because it sounds like we have at least one person from the UK. Obviously, the people from Canada, Aroga, does represent Dancing Dots in Canada and has uh, helped us connect with a lot of music people around the country in Canada who use Lime Letter. Um, and uh, of course, we're in the US. We do have people in a few dozen countries using our Braille software, and I think LineLighter at this point, probably seven or eight countries at least using LineLighter. Okay, well, I've got no more open questions, so I guess I will assume that uh, that means that uh, everybody's good. So before we leave, Bill, is there a way people can reach out to get more information from Dancing Dots? Yes, thanks, Brian. You can certainly, again, email info at dancingdots.com, I-N-F-O at dancingdots, period, C-O-M. You can go to dancingdots.com, and you'll find on the on the home page, there's a link to a page about Lime Lighter. Uh, and uh, there you will find a list of some of our international dealers, and of course, Aroga is right on that list. So if you're in Canada, please do click through to uh, our friends at Aroga. Um, if you're in other countries, you may see that we have people representing the product there. Uh, and if all else fails, of course, um, you know, just, just click on um, our contact form. And uh, you can call us, if you like, at 610 783 Six six nine two here in the U.S. It would be uh, plus one if you're outside the country. Six one zero seven eight three six six nine two. Great. And uh, before we let you go, I did notice that there is one more question in our chat. Um, Thomas is asking if he can add text commands. 
I'm not sure what it means by text commands, but you can certainly enter all types of different text into your lines. For example, if your tempo, you wanted to mark an adagio or Latin slang or that kind of thing, you can enter that text as what line calls a tempo annotation. You can add um, text for lyrics. You saw Mary Pat enter the title text. There are all kinds of different text you can put in. Um, so I hope that's what you're referring to, Thomas, if you're there. And you have a clarification to tell me what you mean by text commands. Okay, great. Well, uh, then I guess we will wrap this up since we are a little bit over time. Um, so I'd like, just like to thank uh, Bill and, and Mary Pat for, for joining us and for, for hosting it. I think uh, it, was, it was pretty informative and, and enjoyable. Well, thank you. It, it was fun. And uh, again, apologies for the rough start. But I think we, once we got going, it went pretty well. So uh, thanks again. I hope you can tune in in a future, future webinar. Absolutely. It sounds great. And again, anybody who wants more information on any of these products uh, can either uh, email or go to dancing.scott.com or alternatively, www.aroga.com. Thanks, everybody, for, for coming out, and uh, we'll see you again.